It's working, Doug. Hello. How's it going? Okay. Where is everybody? Oh, actually, I'm five minutes early. <laughs> I <didn't> even... <laughs> Sorry. Are. Sorry, I didn't even recognize that. I thought I was just going from one thing to the other, and I, I saw the notification. Yeah. Usually, if I see a notification, I don't jump over it, then I'll forget, then I'm late. So. Well, you're much more prompt than I am, at least for this one. You're ahead. So. Yeah. All right. Where are we? We shall be right back. Okay. Hey, John. Good morning. How's it going? I'm doing okay. How are you? Pretty good. Good. You guys uh, done with all the uh, crazy frigid weather? <laughs> you know, it's funny you should ask. Um, it was starting to get really nice like last week and such. And then to, uh, this week, we got down into like what felt like like almost snow weather. And we have a rainy day today. Apparently, we're maybe getting hurricanes or tornadoes or something today. It's like crazy. <laughs> well, sorry I asked. <laughs> <laughs> well, it keeps it exciting, you know? Yeah, exactly. Oh, boy. Where are you actually located? Are you in California? Yeah. Yeah, I'm in the Bay Area. Okay. So what's it like out there? Are you guys getting warm yet? Uh, it, it is schizophrenic. So it'll be, be nice and warm. And then like today is the same thing, overcast. And, you know, we'll probably drizzle a little bit. Mm. Yeah. People all hung over from St. Patty's Day or something? <laughs> well, we are a little early, so. Although Clemens can't make it, so, you know, speculate however you want on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Tommy. Yo. Hey, Ginger. Hey, Doug. And Eric. Hey, Doug. Hey. So, Ginger, I heard a rumor that Austin, or, or Texas, I guess, is getting some interesting weather today. Is that true? Uh, not in Austin, thankfully. Really? Huh. I got a note from somebody saying, hey, Doug, can you do this for me? Because the guy they normally go to is in Austin, and he heard that they may be having some kind of weather, like snow or something down there. But I guess maybe they were mistaken. I sure as heck hope so, because I still have PTSD from the last storm. So. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's supposed to be sunny and 80 today. So. Oh, nice. OK. All right, let's see who's there. Uh, Jennifer, are you there? I am here. Excellent. All right. And Jim. Hi. Yeah. Hello. Timur. Hi there. Hello. Doo -doo -doo -doo. How? Or H A O? Hello. Hello. And Remy. Hey. Hey. And don't worry, Jennifer. I would not forget your last name. I know there's not as many Jennifers these days and probably not attending this meeting, yeah. but you never know. And usually I only add people's names at the end when there's the possibility of a duplicate. Um, even though we really only have like one David and one John recently, they're just common names that I, I don't run into it too often. But Jennifer, you're right, we only have one Jennifer, so. 
and frankly, I think we only have two girls, so. There you go. That's another aspect. That's another aspect. Yes. This makes you guys oh so special. All right, uh, Jesse. Hey, good morning. Hey. Hey, Mark. Hey, Doug. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Hey, Doug. Good morning. Oh, hello. Hi. And Manuel, is that you in there? Yes, hi. Hey, that's what I thought. Okay, cool. Lance. Mr. Lance, are you there? Slinky. Hello. Oh, hey, Slinky. And Lance, you uh, able to come off mute yet? Lance having issues. How about, how about Klaus? Hello. Hello. That's what I thought. Okay, hey Lance, I got gotcha. you. While we're waiting, um, last time I checked, <clears throat> excuse me, there were no topics for the discovery interrupt call today. So if you have any, go in and add it before the uh, end of the primary call. Otherwise, we're going to have a very uh, short meeting. And hey Scott. Doug, Doug, Doug. Doug. All right, one more minute, then we'll get started. All right, three after, let's do this thing. Uh, we have a short agenda today. All right, um, let's see. I don't think there's anybody to nag about reminders or AIs. Uh, okay, community time. Anything from the community people wanna bring up that's not on the agenda? I, I did have one, Doug. Um, I don't know if it's relevant now uh, just mm -hmm. related to um, the correct handling of um, let's say malformed events uh, and I think it's applicable to SDK writers and it and it's come up in the context of uh, an issue I found with the Java SDK so uh, I think we need a bit of guidance on uh, expected behaviors Okay, tell you what, since that's a very specific technical issue, I, I suspect we'll have time. You okay with us putting that at the end of the agenda? Whatever works for you. I'm okay, sorry. cool. Yeah. Yep, thank you. So let's do this. Um, actually, hold on. Whoa, that's not what I meant to do. We'll do it down here. All right, cool. Thank you, Jim. Any other possible topics? All right, moving forward then. Uh, we had an SDK, or we were supposed to have an SDK call last week, but we didn't have any topics. So we skipped that, as I said. Interrupt discovery call this week. If you have a topic, please add it to whoops, the agenda. Okay, moving forward. Um, I guess I dropped it already. Um, I don't think there's anything less for us to do for KubeCon other than, <clears throat> Remy, I know you're working on your presentation. So when that's ready, um, We'll make that available for the group to review. Um, I think that's about it. Unless someone can think of something related to KubeCon we need to mention. Okay, not hearing any. Uh, Timur, anything you want to mention from the workflow spec? Uh, we're just still preparing for the next release, hopefully this week, and uh, also working on the slides for our uh, presentation for the updates. Okay. Any questions for Timur? All right, moving forward. Oh, there's my coupon section. Do I? I'm sorry. Um, yeah, Ginger, you didn't notice any notes about signing up for office hours yet, did you? I tend to miss these things. No, uh, Tin had just sent out a reminder that it was uh, due. I think requests were due in today. Right. 
either today or tomorrow. Um, I just confirmed with her that she actually got it because I don't know if they copy us on the request. So. Um, okay. Yeah, I did notice that, and I, I did actually double check with them as well to make sure that they got our request. So I think we're all set. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you. All right. Um, okay. PRs and stuff. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. So Slinky Europe first. I haven't noticed any updates here. And as we talked about last week, we were hoping to get this one merged <clears throat> as the first uh, official draft of the specification. Is there anything you wanted to mention, Slinky, about this one? Nope. Let's go for it. Okay. Any questions for? Uh, for next, we... uh, yeah, I, I want to. I want to just one thing that now oh, yeah. next step we, to um, Lionel and I will work on the grammar uh, using the Antler format, which is a pretty famous format. And yeah, while developing that, if we find any issues with the spec, we'll report back. Right. Cool. All right, any questions for Slinky before I ask about merging? All right, any objections or concerns with merging this PR? Excellent. Not sure who's typing there, but I'm gonna just wipe it. All right, thank you all for that. Um, I don't see Grant on the call, so let me go ahead and bring this up. And if I remember correctly, I believe we talked about this one last week about possibly modifying our process a little to make it a little easier to uh, call out uh, significant changes that are worthy of a, um, what's the word looking for? Um, release notes type of document as we go through the various releases. Uh, so he actually made some changes here. I think we could ignore that for right now. I think this is basically the bulk of what he's suggesting here is to use the the uh, this commits conventional thingy. I think Lance, you guys use this in at least the JavaScript SDK, I believe. Um, yeah, we do. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, any questions or comments about this? Any concerns heading this direction? I I suspect the biggest, if you want to call it pain, is that people now have to just adhere to it as opposed to just randomly opening up PRs and and stuff. But I don't I don't think it's a huge burden, but to be honest, I haven't actually used it myself. So if anybody wants to chime in and good or bad about using this, I'd love to hear your feedback. Nothing? Okay, does anybody need more time or want more time to think about this before we consider merging it? I would love to have more time to review it. Okay, fair enough. Thanks. I don't think we're in any rush, so that's fair. Okay, so we will hold off till next week. Thank you, Jennifer, for speaking up. And where's that one? Here we go. All right, cool. Any other questions or comments on this one? The other changes, I think this is just indenting to clean up the table of contents. And I guess you just wanted to do some linting stuff to ensure that you actually followed the conventions, I think. But I'm not sure. I haven't actually looked at it. All right, anything, any other questions, comments? All right, moving forward then. All right, so on last week's call, we talked about uh, there are two different issues out there. Uh, one was how to handle or how to interpret a get to a discovery endpoint where suddenly a service vanished. How do you interpret that? And then there was a second question about do we want to introduce some sort of life cycle around uh, the services in the discovery endpoint? And we decided to split those two up and I took the action item to go ahead and create at least one PR, which was around the missing service and the get response. And basically what I did is down here in the get services response, I added this sentence here. So any service previously returned to a client that does not appear in this result can be assumed to be deleted. Okay. So I, th and I think that's consistent with what we talked about last week, which was you really have no choice but to assume it's gone. Um, and granted this, this has nothing to do with the case of you get back some other error condition. This is you get back a 200, you get back a list of things, and this one's just missing, right? Um, how do we actually interpret that? So this PR is about just adding that one sentence. I do have another PR, which I think we need more time to think about, which deals with the full life cycle thing that we talked about, about possibly in, in, introducing a deprecation type field and stuff like that. 
but this is just about to handle the missing entry in a get. So any questions or comments on this one? Okay. Does anybody want more time to think about this one before we consider merging it? Okay, any objection then to approving? All right, cool, thank you all, whoops. All right, so this one, I think might require a little more thought, especially since someone made a comment in there, which I have not responded to yet. So I think it's premature to merge. Let me hide the comments first. All right, so what I decided to do here was to take what I, what I consider to be the simple approach, which was start out with just adding a removal time. And the presence of this attribute in a service uh, description indicates two things. One is that it's deprecated. And two, obviously, specifies the time at which it will be removed. Um, it's not allowed to be removed before that time, but it can live longer after that time. Uh, so there's no guarantee that it will be around anywhere after that, but you could include it if you wanted to, or you could live on for a while. Um, it makes no, the, the, this definition places no burden in terms on what it means for existing subscriptions, right? Whether they're still valid or not. I figured um, we could talk about that later uh, if we want to at all, or if, if we even want to. Um, because that's a whole different ball of wax, basically. Um, but anyway, that's basically it for the initial proposal I put forward just to get the conversation going. Um, now, there was a comment in there by somebody. I can't remember who it was. I guess it was Tom. Yeah, he was wondering whether we need to allow people to specify not just the time, but an alternative, meaning point to another service to say, hey, this one's going to take its place. And I'm assuming, yeah, based upon what he wrote here, he wants it to be optional. Um, I haven't thought deep about that, whether I like it or dislike it. I just um, think it's an interesting way to go. It, it, at first I was a little hesitant to it, but then I realized that's not that uncommon. You know, we do things like 301 for redirects and you know, say, go look over here kind of stuff. So it's not weird. I just got a little worried about whether that's introducing a whole new layer of complexity um, into the model, as opposed to just a simple timestamp thing. But the more I kept thinking about it, the more I was warming up to it. So let me go ahead and pause there. <clears throat> and see if there are any questions, comments, how do people feel about either of these directions or ideas. Somebody has to speak up, otherwise I'll pick on somebody and I, and I already have somebody in mind. <laughs> All right, let's start with some J's. Jennifer and or Jem. Because I know, Jem, you, you're, you're opening up one of the issues. And Jennifer, I know you spoke on this before in the past. Either one of you want to chime in here? Or any thoughts on this? I'll let ladies go first. There you go. Jennifer, you want to chime in or, or not? You don't have to if you don't want to. Just... I'm just buying myself time, obviously. <laughs> That's right. Stall, stall, stall. <laughs> Jennifer, are you still around? Or she might have stepped away. I'm still here. Oh, there you go. OK. Silence means you're you don't want to speak, or uh, it means that my four year old just walked in and I got <laughs> I got uh, distracted. Okay, um, I'll let the okay. Now I'll give you some chance to think about. It. I'll pick on Jim. Then you're looking for any possible feedback on this proposal for adding a, uh, a removal a deprecation removal time and possibly a pointer to an alternative. So Jim, any thoughts on this one? That seems reasonable. I think. Yeah, so we're saying it's going to be removed you know, on this time and replaced by, so what, what, what do you consider would go in that alternative? Is it appointed to something else or is it just text? Yeah, I don't know. He, um, Tom did not say. I was kind of assuming it would be obviously something unique, right? So it could be, do we, I, do we, I can't remember. We have IDs in here, right? So yeah, so it could be just an ID because I think that's the only thing that's guaranteed to be unique and immutable. So that might be the obvious answer, but to be honest, I haven't thought about it. Right. Okay. And I, I, I would mean, actually, it, well, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I mean, if there is an alternative, then presumably you should reference it through its ID. That would seem to make sense. Um, and presumably the lack of that means, well, we've decided just not to offer this anymore at all in any shape or form. 
Yeah. That'd be my interpretation. Yeah. The only downside to using ID that I can think of would be what if you wanted to point to a different service discovery endpoint? And I don't know whether that's introducing a layer of complexity again that's too much or, or not. Yeah. I, I guess it depends whether you expect this to be humanly readable or machine, you know, humanly interpreted or machine interpreted, I guess. Right. Yeah. I was, I was kind of thinking if it is in a different place, it could be a URL, right? But then right. still ID based. But yeah. Anyway, John, your hands up. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Jim. No, so the, the URL that's the URL to the service, isn't that, wouldn't that work? Yes, yeah, if we yeah. use that and I'm thinking. Well, yeah, that, that, relative, that, that Is that relative to this particular discovery endpoint? It's not relative, I believe, I don't have to double check it. But I think it is supposed to be a full URI and I think it's probably immutable since the ID is immutable, but I'll double check on those because okay. that might be the safest way out of there yeah but in principle i i yes i would buy into that change okay john your hands up yeah i guess uh, in reverse order yeah i think the the unique url would be better um my question about uh, the alternative piece is like what does that say if it's there or not there like what are the guarantees if we're making it optional right it, it is does that mean that the new service or the replacement service or whatever this alternative is, does that have to exist before the end of the time? Does it, is it only going to exist after? Is the is it completely unspecified? Like what are what are the you know sort of it might not be guaranteed, but what's the expectation in the in the model here uh, for having that? Good questions. Hey, I'm useful for once. <laughs> hardly, hard, hardly for once. <laughs> oh my. Um, okay, I'm trying to remember. Was it just the guarantees for when it's going to be available? Were there other questions in there you brought up? I would say the plus one to the like being really clear about expectations is alternative. Would that be something for the machine or for the human? Uh, would it be like if you see an alternative? you as a human and it will change and update what you call or would the should something follow the alternative url right when you say something should follow can you elaborate on what not, you meant by that not follow but like use that url instead so like is it is it like what is the expectation around the alternative like alternative to, i don't know that i understand exactly what I, and I know it's just a, like a, a guidance, but what what would be the recommendation there? Like if, how would we, how would I, how should I interpret alternative? Right. Yeah, and for example, like, well, do I, what, what does that mean around discovery and subscriptions? Do I have to, like, is it, well, I just go st start a new subscription. Does my subscription carry over? Like there's there's a bunch of potential um, assumptions around that stuff that uh, that could be uh, quite confusing. The question: How would I uh, deduplicate across those uh, two potential streams? How do I do the transition? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Transition, holy moly, that's not right. <laughs> There's an M in there somewhere, I knew it. Okay, any other questions, comments? Okay, cool. Just a transmission as opposed to, oh, oh transition, sorry. Not, transition, not holy, no. It's yeah, transition. so going from one of the streams to the other. Uh, yes. Particularly if there, if it's a new version of the stream, so it's maybe offering a new attribute or something, um, and that new service is, uh, you know, I don't know, if there's version and uh, service uh, change, then how do you deal with anything that might be different and correlating the events across the two? So let's say it's a bank uh, account balance change. I don't want to process the same deposit twice, right? So I need to know. How do I identify? Anyway, that, that's kind of the space that I'm concerned. You don't know. You yep. need to go into detail. Yep. Okay. Lots of good questions here. And this, these are the 
complex things that I was worried about. But we'll and see. just to be clear, like all of these questions all exist whether or not the this alternative thing is added to the spec, right? There, these are all all issues um, around timing anyway. It, it's just if we're putting alternative or whatever in its spot, we're we're making it more official. Um, so we're going to have to be a little more, um, I don't know, descriptive. Uh, maybe, right? Because it's also possible for us to say we're not going to say anything. Yes, but that's a dis being explicitly descriptive, whether we're prescriptive about the behavior or not. Yeah, that is true. Yes. Okay. Any other questions, comments, thoughts? Okay, clearly we can't merge this one. So I guess we'll keep moving forward then if there's no more discussion points on that one. Um, all right, now Clemens could not make the call. I'm wondering if anybody had any thoughts on this one yet. Anybody come up with an alternative aside from these two that he mentioned? Does anybody want to chime in in terms of where their head is at currently in terms of which direction to go with this? I know I, if I'm remembering correctly, I think on last week's call, there was some leaning towards B and kind of being a bit hand wavy about the fact that yes, technically it's a breaking change, but we can consider this a, a, big, a big mistake that we're just fixing and that we can probably get by with maybe a 1.1 instead of a 2.0 for the next release, but I wasn't sure how people thought about that. So Klaus, did you want to speak Yeah, on? I talked to the folks who did uh, the implementation for us and <laughs> turned out that the implementation is actually incomplete. It doesn't send origin. So they fixed it. They could then just use webhook request origin and wouldn't be a breaking change for us really. OK. Anybody else want to chime in? Is it fair to say that that's where most people's heads are at, is looking at a, a variation of B? OK, you guys are awfully quiet today. OK, I'm going to assume that's true. And then we'll wait for Clemens to come back and maybe poke on him to create a PR, if that's the direction we want to go. Uh, hold on, let me take some notes here. I'll nag him about that one offline. Whoops. Okay. Um, whoa, wait a minute. That's the wrong section. Apologize for that one. Okay. Anything else on this one people want to bring up? All right. Yes, I agree with you, Lance. Hopefully that there aren't any, very many implementations out there we have to worry about, but Still, it's a little worrisome. All right, in that case, we're technically at the end of the formal agenda. Any other issues or PRs you want to bring up? All right, in that case, Jim, would you like to reintroduce the issue that you mentioned earlier today? Sure, and thanks. Just a, really a convention uh, that I'm looking for clarity on. Um, so the scenario is that I sort of discovered that uh, the Java uh, JSON binding you know, in the Java SDK was not sort of completely in the spirit of the specification. Um, and where it, where it was having a problem was in its handling of numeric attribute types. If you look at the cloud event spec, it says that uh, only integer you know, numeric types are, are allowed for context attributes. Uh, the uh, the JSON format spec uh, also then you know goes on to say that you know it's numeric but limited to integers, uh, but the the implementation as it stood actually allowed decimals and floats and other sort of um, native numeric types to to flow, um, whereas they should have been represented as strings. So 
the question becomes what's an SDK or a consumer expected to do if it receives a non-conforming payload? I think it's more of a, a potential issue for um, maybe JSON rather than the proto spec because the proto spec won't, you know, by its very nature, doesn't allow you to create uh, attribute values that are against the specification. But theoretically, anybody could create a JSON document, you know, by hand um, and put, you know, define an attribute with a, um, you know, a decimal number value or a long number value. And so the question becomes, what's the handling expectation there? Is an SDK expected to coerce that to a string? Um, or is it meant to, you know, ignore it, drop it? Um, I, I, so that that's really the concern, because I suspect this might apply to other SDKs as well. Uh, probably not just Go, not just Java, rather. Okay. Anybody want to chime in? I assume SDK folks might want to speak up. I think I already answered in your uh, PR. Uh, for me, it, it just fail, uh, it must fail. Easy. I mean, there there are, there are some errors that even fails the parsing. So if there's something like uh, your example is the numeric uh, the decimal numbers. Uh, if there's a, de a decimal number, it must fail. That's it. So uh, in fact, the this year you you underlined was was an overlook for me. So, okay, that's cool. Um, Slinky, since you're in multiple SDKs, is that the way all the SDKs that you're that you're played with operate? They they reject the request. Well, numeric uh, the numeric thing. Uh, to be honest, I think in SDK Go, we don't check it. And even in, I don't know, I, I, need, I need to to look at it again, but I think the JSON parser in SDK Go doesn't check the numeric and just accepts every kind of numeric value. And maybe it's the same in SDK Rust too. Okay. What, what do you guys do with, um, with like malformed timestamps? Do you check those at all or would you reject the request? Uh, no, no, no. The, these are uh, currently checked. I mean, it, uh, it, if it can pass the timestamp, it fails. It fails, okay. Only for the time field, though. Yeah, only oh, right. for the time. Of, of yeah, course, yeah, of yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Okay. Uh, John is asking, a, I know it might be slightly off topic, but John is asking this in the chat, uh, is this checked in the conformance tests? Do we, where, where do we stand in the conformance test, by the way? We don't. We have some cucumber based testing. It needs to be filled out more. And Do they check for this type of thing? Is that across languages? Um, or, or you have to write the interpreter on the your language specific side. So it's run, I think, in Java, Java, JavaScript, and Go at the moment. No, in Java, there isn't. There was a PR, but it was never completed, and I never ah, had time to. Okay. Then just JavaScript and Go. Cool. So, Lance, what does the JavaScript one do? Do you guys reject or? So, this comes up a lot. <laughs> um, we, uh, if an event is created through a process, uh, if, if it's coming across a wire, right? If an event is coming across the wire, then we don't necessarily throw an exception if it's malformed, uh, as long as we can parse it. And then there's a validate method um, that the user can call to validate that event and um, validation will cause an exception to be thrown. But we wanna be loose about what we accept because we know that some event providers may have malformed events. And um, this actually was a, this happened in some implementation of some stuff that we were doing, um, we were getting, uh, uh, some events from Camel that I don't remember exactly what the issue was. Like they didn't have a, a valid, they didn't have a uh, data content type field. Maybe I can't remember, but um, we made the decision to 
be loose in our validation on receiving events over the wire. But if you create a new event that's malformed or has you know, bad fields um, directly, then um, that's strict validation and it will throw an exception. Okay, thank you. John, your hands up. Uh, I have a question for, for Lance. You, you, since you're separating this validation step, like, so, are you, so is validating doing conformance tests or are you separating the conformance from the, you know, oh, this is totally missing a field and things like that. Like, is there a model there that we should try and support across the board, I guess is the question. Um, by conformance, you're talking about like uh, field types and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, so we use um, a, a JSON validating parser called AJV, I think. Um, and so we feed the schema into that parser um, and, uh, you know, it's based on uh, on the existing schema, uh, and it it does the validation based on type. Yeah. Just curious, and this might be a great topic for a future SDK call. But should the SDKs be somewhat consistent here? I mean, like, should we all, or should all the SDKs fail, or should all the SDKs follow the JavaScript model and be? Uh, you know, loosen what they accept, but then have a separate validation step that someone could ask to validate it and get an error message back that way? Or is, or should SDK, each SDK make its own decision about this? I mean, how important is consistency on this? Just curious what people think. I don't feel like it's that uh, required, right? Like JavaScript is kind of known for being slightly more loose about types and, and data content than say like, C. Okay. So I, I would kind of expect to be able to make it go in JavaScript, but absolutely break with Proto. Okay, fair enough. Jim, did you want to chime in there? Well, I just say that presumably, you know, uh, I, I somewhat agree with the being flexible on what you receive sort of semantic, but we should be extremely spec compliant on what we produce. Yeah, so you shouldn't be able to produce an event that, that violates the spec. And, and that's how we do it in JavaScript. We, you can't produce one. I, actually, you, <laughs> you can. It's a flag, but it defaults to strict validation. But the, but the interesting thing is that the, uh, the, JSON, uh, the, the JSON schema, uh, because there are no... Um, there are no attributes that take in values, for instance. So there's no constraint in that schema that says, you know, a particular field must be an integer. I think that's, that has to be done in, in the SDK itself, I think, to disallow sort of creation of um, numeric attributes that, that are bigger than an int. And I assume that would apply in the Go use space as well. Yeah, you're right. I mean, the JSON schema validation is just like number. <laughs> yeah, so I exactly. guess it's whatever number value the language will support. So, Jem, did you get the answer you're looking for? Um, I don't think I, well, I mean, it, um, Based on Slinky's sort of comments, you know, if we're from an SD, from a Java SDK, it sounds like we would reject that. Is that what I'm hearing? I believe so. So, it, so I mean, um, that's fine from a Java perspective, but I mean, it, it, you know, it does raise that consistency question across SDKs, I guess. On the Go side, there is an opportunity for you as the receiver to handle an error and do manual parsing if you want to, but it's not gonna do all of the magic that the current SDK does. Sort of an escape hatch mechanism, yeah. Yeah. But you oh, can't use all the magic client pieces. You have to 
kind of drop down and you have to be aware of what which uh, protocol you're actually using because you're going to have to go and produce the cloud event yourself. All right. Okay, Slinky, your hands up. Yeah, sorry for interrupting. Um, uh, as I said, we can, and I think this is something that can be applied in our other SDKs too, um, we can have a more loose parsing mode where we parse something even if it's not very super valid, let's say. Um, but again, for me, the fault should be extremely strict. Yeah. And in like, um, uh, as a, uh, as a Jackson user, so the Jackson is the Java JSON parsing library. Jackson actually has this features of being a little bit stricter or looser when parsing uh, JSON. So choosing, for example, between the types, um, the numeric types and so on. So it's also, let's say, um, idiomatic for a Jackson user. Okay. All right. Any other questions, comments, discussion points around Jim's question? All right. Any other topics at all people want to bring up? Okay. In that case, did I miss anybody for the attendee list? I think I got everybody. All right, before we adjourn, don't see any topics for discovery. So last chance, any topics for discovery stuff? Just a reminder, we are planning on doing interop at the end of the month. So we're, you know, about two weeks away. So hopefully people are coding away feverishly. All right, in that case, I believe we are done. Thank you all for joining. We'll talk again next week. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Cheers.